The EU will discuss further sanctions it can impose against Russia following the emergence of evidence that Moscow's troops may have committed a number of war crimes. Investigators and journalists have found what appears to be evidence of the deliberate killing of civilians in Bukha, a town on the outskirts of Kyiv, and other nearby areas. Russia withdrew its forces from the region so that it can focus on liberating the Donbas area, in eastern Ukraine. On Tuesday, EU finance ministers met in Luxembourg to debate how they can apply further pressure on Russian President Vladimir Putin's war efforts. What sanctions have the EU imposed? One of the first measures the EU introduced was a ban on Russian aircraft from flying in its airspace. The bloc has joined the UK and US in placing sanctions against more than 1,000 Russian individuals and businesses altogether. A commitment has also been made by the EU to become energy independent from Russia well before 2030 it currently gets a quarter of its oil and 40% of its gas from Moscow. Why is the EU looking to increase its sanctions? In recent days Ukrainian forces have said they've found mass graves of civilians in areas in and around the capital Kyiv, which Russian forces had previously occupied. Evidence has also been discovered of civilians having been shot dead after their feet and hands were bound. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson said the attacks are yet more evidence of war crimes. Moscow has also previously been accused of using cluster munitions during its invasion of Ukraine, with evidence mounting of such bombs being used in Kharkiv. The UK has said Russia has used thermobaric explosives, which create a massive vacuum by sucking up oxygen. Typically, they produce a blast wave of a significantly longer duration than that of a conventional explosive and are capable of vaporizing human bodies. While these are not banned outright, the deliberate use near civilians would almost certainly break the rules of war. What is a war crime? Under the Geneva Conventions and several other international laws and agreements, civilians cannot be deliberately attacked. The infrastructure which they live in can also not be intentionally destroyed.